agriculture product productivity project. U.S. police have nabbed the second suspect in the Boston Marathon bombing following an air 24 lockdown and manhunt in Watertown. And former Pakistani military strongman Pervez Musarraf has escaped to his rumbling mansion outside Islamabad after a court ordered his arrest and detention. That brings us to the end of the news. Thanks for joining us. Stay tuned in to GRTS. Assalamu alaikum. You know how many guests it and Gambia Radio and Television Services. Man, the Sir Harid Mamdeng, Boron Bakum. You know, they're in Koyengal. Man, Madi Koyengal. Future JATS. Hello, I'm Mudiwa, and I'm sure you've never heard about the weekly buzz before. But I will be buzzing into your homes every single week to bring you the latest buzz in town, only on JATS. Je la mincham apalu alteri mala mincham Sir Harid live sub connect JATS. Damane. Can we am fit for the whole life? Three loma, ngare, nyepo dali hatai. Man Abdullah Baji, Chibir Jates, parenen purham, who is the Gambia's funniest comedian. The solemn pare, we gonna Gangnam Star. Open Gangnam Star. Gangnam Star. You're watching Weekend Spectrum on DRTS. My name is Ibrahim Abalde. We are in Penyam this week as part of our programs. We're trying to find more from Lamin Jaju, one Gambian who has been in Canada for several years and he has decided to come back but with something in his mind. Let's find out in this program what Lamin Jaju of Penyam is all about to do. Also in the program, we have a glowing tribute on the writer Chinyo Achebe. We'll be finding out more from people who know about what he has written. Well, we pay a glowing tribute to the Chavez's legacy now that Nicolas Maduro has been elected president of Venezuela. We have these and other stories in Weekend Spectrum. We'll be right back right after this. Okay. A native an indigenous Gambian, for that matter, has decided to come back to his native village here in Penyam. But one thing is that he has decided not to be seen or identified as a scholar, but instead a man who has come with a home beginning. He decided to come with his ideas to transform it, thereby making so that everybody in the village takes part in it. And this is about the Back to the Land philosophy, which the President, His Excellency, Sir Professor Haji E.J.J. Jame, has been promoting. Lamin Jaju tells us more about his return from Canada and what he has decided to do here in his native village in Penyam. His work overseas cut him off from his native community. However, things it seems have started to change for the better for Lamin Jaju. If all goes as planned, this empty plot of land is expected to serve as an ideal vegetable garden in the making. The idea of establishing nursery is being systematically developed at his home by Lamin himself. From time to time, he worked with some of his family members who are happy that the idea of establishing a vegetable garden is being developed. In an interview with Weekend Spectrum in Penyam, Lamin Jaju did not mince his words when he said he was inspired by President Jame's back to the land call to consume what we grew. The most uh, thing that really perpetuated me to come back here is me sitting down in the Western Wall, seeing, hearing every now and then, oh, America is sending f f uh, aid, foreign, uh, food aid to Africa, especially Gambia. I, I hate it. I really don't like that because I believe that, you know, that foreign aid is not the answer for, for African issues. So I think we as Africans, we have to stand up for ourselves. We do it because since our head of state, the president, is, is, has already been mentioning it all, all every now and then, that people should go back to the land. 
Why should people go back to the land? It's because he know that that's where our benefit lies, for us to be who we are, to be self-reliant, rather than to be, to be dependent. So the theory, the dependent, uh, dependency theory, is what we are trying to, to break here, because we don't want that. We want to be more uh, on, our, on our own, you know, to be able to do things for ourselves. When you have your family, it's you, the family head, who have to try to produce something for your family, not to depend on somebody to give you foreign aid to maintain your family. I believe that's a very wrong concept, and so as a result of that, I decided that, you know, this is what I re should really do, since the government has given the go for people to go back to the land and do whatever you can do. Mm -hmm. You know, if you approach them for, for, for help, obviously I believe the government will help you out. So it is you, now your turn to really go back to the land, as the president has already suggested for people to go back to the land, and then if you are sought with whatever, I believe, you know, if you turn back, if you face them again, there is always help for you. So that's why I thought, you know, it's the best thing to do for the community. Okay. It is one of the indigenous settlements in this region the people here are happy in their hope on this vegetable garden. Kalilu Koli is hoping for the best. It's a good, very good move yeah. because um, as, we, as you are seeing, well, this uh, the nursery is highly protected from animals and even from insects that, I mean, affects, you know, veg uh, nursery beds. So what would you tell the people of your community? Uh, for the people of the community, I want them to come and, and, and we work together so that we can make it a success because it's a very good initiative and uh, if we work together obviously we will make a big difference in our ve vegetable production okay thank you it is not the idea perhaps Lamin Jaju also needs the support of the people and partners who are working in such ventures i have the support of my community which is penyem by the support of the alikalo here mr Kali, kalilu so we we are here we can do it that was why I, I, I had requested, you know, for, for connection or to, to collaborate with other organizations across Gambia. But, you know, it seems to be like that was always a failed point for me. So I don't want it to feel like, you know, it's a dead end. We can always do it. So that's why with the support of the community in Penyam, plus the Alicalo here, so we, we are here. Laimin Jaju said it is just going to take some time before his final journey back home and work in the very community he called home. Well, he died sometime last month, but his legacy has a lasting impression for a number of writers around the continent. Chinio Achebe has written a number of books. His work is so popular that to an extent that almost every child who reads literature in Africa knows about things fall apart. But this man, a number of people still think there are a lot of things that can be said about him. As we continue our tribute, let's find out from the number of writers who has a different takes on what Achebe was as a writer. When it comes to writing, Chino Achebe is considered to be one of the finest writers Africa ever had. The life story of this great writer who died last month is almost available to every literature student on the continent. Some have never met him. But does it really matter? Sometimes in literature or in any work of art for that matter, the text is what is important, sometimes not the author. During the course of the week, we tracked veteran teacher, cum writer Michael Hamadi Seka. Here is his reflections on Achebe, the writer, the Pan-Africanist. He did not only dedicate legacy to us, but he had also inspired us. Because if you look at Achebe's works, Ibrahima, and you compare him with others, you will see him reflected in C.C. Spring Rice, the poet, when she said, so be a creator of mine, whose skillful hands and thoughts divine did mold me into a frame without a blame and gave me this fleeting frame. In this span of strife and hatred, buttressed by iron and faith, grant me to live to love mankind and all thoughtful pages we sinned. May I learn to serve the poor, may I live to serve the weak and the meek, so that when death wins, I shall not miss the eternal pathway to bliss. So when Achebe died, he died as a happy man. He has accomplished his academic sojourn. He has done what is expected of him. He has prepared the ground for African literature and widened the eyes of Africans. So Achebe has repeated a lot to us, Ibrahim. Unlike Sabali, who is not a literature student, his take on Achebe is also thought provoking. When Things Fall Apart was published, as you rightly know, 
the horizon was very dark for African for African authors. It took him years 